and take a silent about Sharon time. It's called the Mara Saad play. Um, all, there was a documentary on television which I saw at that time wh which showed all the actors improvising and um, they'd all been to a mental hospital and everybody had picked somebody to use as a basis, a real person, to use as a basis for their character. And I remember thinking then when I saw that, there must be, because they were doing this to serve this German play that was translated into English. I remember thinking, actually, if you can do all that to serve a play that already exists, and he'd also done it famously, a lot of improvising for a, for a very famous production of King Lear that he'd done, which was also filled with Paul Schofield. I remember thinking, if you could do that to serve a, an existing text, of a play, surely you can carry it to a, go one step further and actually make a piece of work. Um, and so, yes, I mean, I actually, um, so all these things that have been very influenced by him. I, 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 I now have the privilege of knowing him, and um, and what's very overwhelming to me because he's um, now in his eighties. I mean, he's a, turned out to be a great fan of my work, and um, is very complimentary towards it. And I, I, am very, I, that's great. That's why that happens when you're somebody that you really learn from and look up to when you're just out there. When that happens, it's sort of you feel. Very honoured, really. How did you choose the colour palette for the film? Thank you. Um, it's um, it's a good question. We, we, we you know, I, I I get to a stage when I'm developing these things where I want to um, I, I have to sit down and share the idea. That I've got on the go with the cinematographer and the designers, and um, I said, you know, okay, this is about Poppy. I described Poppy as we've got her so far. I just said it's about this energy, this this um, vitality, and it needs to have bright, bold colours. This film. We've made a lot of films which have been quite muted in their palette, but this needs to be different. And um, we were about to shoot tests to work out, you know how to get the look. When Dick Pope, the cinematographer, went to a uh, film industry trade fair in London, and it was about three days before we were going to shoot the test, Fuji Film uh, set up their stall and um, announced that they were, they'd created this new professional motion picture film stock called Vivid, which is very primary, bright primary colours. And we tested that, and we, we thought it was great, and we used it. And then, of course, you know, the choices of um, the decor and also the costumes and everything else all go with that. Um, but just when you just shoot, go around as we do at the beginning, just shooting uh, London town, you know, it, it sort of has that... In a way, it resonates with um, the kids in the class and their paint and their crayons and that as well. You know. And the, the thing that, that Sally wears... Uh, Poppy's costume. I mean, that is all off the pack. I mean, nothing was made specially. It was all stuff you could buy in the shops last year. But it, again, we, was, you know, we said, okay, what, are her, what would her character choices be? And th 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 those were they. You, you had talked before also about the, the challenges of the weather. You shot it. Yeah, it was, shot during, it was shot during the summer of last year, 2007, which is one of the worst um, s summers ever in, in British Isles, and um, uh, you know, it just rained all the time. And so, somebody said to me at a Q&A in London, "It doesn't seem like London to me." I mean, there was no rain. And I said, "No, because we we filmed it all in the short gaps between the showers. You know? We were running around like blue-assed flies, trying to avoid, avoid the rain. It was very difficult. Got wet." Not going in that, that 
direction that I began to dread you were going to go into. What was that? <laughs> well, that Scott was, you know, we're conditioned here in the, in the States for, for terrible things to happen to good people. So I thought perhaps Scott was going to show up and, and destroy, to destroy Poppy. And, and my daughter and I were cringing because we thought that, that we felt that tension. And that something terrible was about to happen. And when the movie ended, she and I both looked at each other and said the very same thing. Thank God the other shoe didn't drop. <laughs> but in any case, what I'm saying is thank you because you didn't you weren't tested to go in that direction and, and change, you know. Thank you. Change it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my question was very similar to that. I didn't know if you had considered taking Scott in a different direction at the very end. No, because it's about, look, it's about Poppy and Poppy's ability to deal with things. You know, and I think the, the important thing, I mean, obviously Scott is tragic, and his, his fate, you know, you can't be very hopeful for him, sadly. Um, plainly, he needs love, but you can see that, you know, he would find it very difficult to deal with, actually. Um, and so, you know, but Poppy, you know, she, she does, it's, you know, it, it, it's important that what happens, happens, you know, that she, maintains the balance, you know, she's, she's got to walk away, she can't deal with this anymore, but at the same time, she's sympathetic, she can see what's happened to him, she, needs, he, she certainly thinks he needs help, and she says as much, you know. Um, but it would be gratuitous and a red herring to, for anything to happen such as you're talking about, because that's not what it's about, not what the film's about, and that, of course, relates to what you're saying as well. Thank you both for saying what you are. I just want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> you have a signature of things. People were talking about the eyes, like the guy in Blade Runner, the guy in blue eyes. Yes. You, the Elder Storm, came in here in Blade, and Glenn the Black, and the Secret of the Lies, the eyes. And if you just study the eyes, Thank you. I'm just curious, how long uh, was the idea for the genesis of the film in your head before you said, okay, now it's time to make a movie, let's get a bunch of actors and spend six months? Uh, a while. I don't, I don't really know because these things are on the go and then you sort of deal with them, you know? I mean, apart from anything else, I think I had a growing feeling and, I, and now the way things are going, I'm glad I had that feeling, that I wanted to make a, what I've now, having made the film, call an anti-miserabilist film. <laughs> I want, you know, because we live in tough times and it's very easy to be gloomy about things. Very easy, and we should be, because they're dangerous times. And they're getting more dangerous all the time. And when you've had your election shortly, it'll be even more dangerous still. Um, so, the, the thing is, um, I, I, you know, um, I, I wanted to make a film where, you know, which has dealt with some, all those people who, while we're all being gloomy, actually are getting on with it, getting out there, rolling up their sleeves and getting down to it, which is what Poppy is, really. And not least amongst them are teachers. You know, you, if you teach kids, you are, it's an act of optimism, you know, you're nurturing the future, you know, these kids this age are the grandparents of the you know, their, their grandchildren will be citizens of the 22nd century, you know. Um, so I think it's important um, to, to acknowledge that we have to be positive as well as acknowledge the, that the world is in a disastrous state. And that's what the film is an expression of. And that's been on the go, you know, that isn't a, like, um, you know, an idea for a movie. That's an ongoing preoccupation. Lived in London, and I wondered how you did you have to cut off the streets, cordon them off, and even film your scenes because there's a lot of traffic normally, and that wasn't evident. 
Well, certainly in the scene where they have their bust up in the street at the, the end, the, we did um, have the, the police sealed off the end of the street. It was a one-way street, so they had to seal off one end. Um, and they did. They held it up while we were shooting. Um, but of course, a lot of the film, you can see, we absolutely didn't um, control the traffic. We filmed with things going on naturally, basically. But the sound of construction and, and people kind of disturbing you while you were filming? Or... No, I mean, you know, yeah, there's always things like that. I mean, the, the hazard of filming in big cities is that. But on the other hand, um, that's also the joy of it, because you can use it, as, as I say, we did. Um, it, was, but it used to be much more difficult to film in London, and then um, now, uh, taking, um, heeding how it works in the States, where each city's got a film department, and where the police are, I mean, in New York, for example, I mean, and in LA, um, there's the whole police department that's got the responsibility to make filming work for people. And they've now, we now have that in London for the first, only very recently has it been introduced. And it's great. I mean, there's actually two police officers who actually are the film department and they actually know about films. Instead of regarding filmmakers as damn nuisance, they're actually positive. And they, so we actually, for the first, I've been making films for a very long time and we were amazed on this film that we actually had two uniformed police, sometimes three, with us. And we said, okay, can we stop the traffic now? And we said, yes, fine. And then stop the in a rush hour. Uh, amazing, you know. So like, it has got easier, certainly. But I don't think there's very much of the film where we actually did do that because it's mostly just what you see is the, the real world carrying on in the shot, basically. But thank you for asking such a prosaic question. It's a <laughs> pleasure to talk about something so tangible. <laughs> I'll give you her number. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you. Actually, somebody yesterday asked me whether, what, whether I would, um, could, whether I could bear to be stranded on a desert island with Poppy. And my answer was yes, please. I'd love it. It would be great For as long as possible, please. <laughs> Oh yeah, you, you talked a lot about how you took six months to develop the characters, and I think it did really come out in the movie. Um, even the time where there were some actors didn't spend a lot of time on screen, you still feel like you got to know them. Uh, my question is though, was, did you find it more difficult to create the character of Poppy, or to create the characters to surround her with? Well, the question is, was it more difficult to create Poppy, or the characters around her? Yeah, that, it's a question with no answer. I mean, there, there were not Neither was more difficult than the other. I mean, the job was to create the characters, and that's what we did. I, I, there is no, I can't answer that. There isn't, I can't, there is no difference. They all were, they're all three characters that we create in the same way, and with the same, the same difficulties and, and easinesses. I don't, I, I, it's a question that, that, that there isn't an issue there. There's no, you know. I thought was really special about this film for me was the fact that they were all teachers. 